In Creole Parametric, you can route pipelines in your assemblies. But first, you might want to create a separate assembly for your piping. You don't have to do that. You could route your pipelines right at your top level assembly if you wanted to. But in this situation, let's say I wanted to create them separately as their own assembly. Let's do that. And by the way, what I'm doing is the same setup process if I was doing cabling. In my assembly, I'm going to start off by creating a sub-assembly. I'll click on the Create button, and it opens up the Create Component dialog box. I will choose sub-assembly as what I want to create. And for the file name, I'm going to call it my Methanol Piping. And you can fill in a common name if you want. I will click the OK button. And then it opens up the Creation Options dialog box. This is my standard default template. I'm going to click OK in order to use that one. And then you can locate it using constraints. But in this situation, I'm just going to use the default constraint. I can get to that right from the right mouse button. And then you can hit the check mark or middle mouse button is the same thing as the check mark. Now I am going to create a skeleton model in that subassembly so that I can copy my routing references from this top level assembly. First, I will click on the component in the model tree. Then I will use the activate icon from the mini toolbar. That way, when I create my skeleton model, it's going to end up in this subassembly. Like before, I will click on the create button. But this time, instead of using subassembly, I'll change it to skeleton model. By default, it's going to give it the name of the assembly underscore scale, and then those numbers are because I have a config.pro option turned on that allows me to use multiple skeletons. But this will only have one skeleton, so I will take the numbers off the end. Let's click the OK button, and this is my standard start part. I'm happy with that. I will click the OK button. Since this was a skeleton, it's automatically going to be located at the default of that subassembly. It's even ahead of the default datum planes of that subassembly. I don't need to apply the default constraint to it. Now I want to copy my references. So this time I will activate the skeleton model by left clicking on it and then choosing the activate icon in the mini toolbar. For copying my references, the easy way to do it is with the shrink wrap command. The shrink wrap command allows you to grab all the external surfaces from another assembly. I'll click on shrink wrap and I will grab the outer shell that is good, but I don't need to grab all the different components. I'm going to route a bunch of pipes from those pink and red subassemblies down there where you can see the fitting up to the tanks up top where they have the brown fittings, or excuse me, the gray fittings. So let's just pick what we want to use. I'll click on the subset button and it opens up the dialog box of the various different components. And I'm gonna zoom in over here and readjust this just so that I can see all the different components. And I'm gonna pick what I want to use right out of the model graphics. I'm gonna use a little different technique. Right now it's showing me everything that I could possibly pick, everything that's going to be considered, but I'm going to set the default rule to ignore. By default, if I don't select something explicitly, I don't want it to be included. And so I can see what I'm picking. I'm gonna change the show option from considered to ignored. And so now I'm gonna to try to figure out what I want to use. So let's start off zooming in over here. I will pick on this component and I can figure out that, okay, it's probably these three components. And as I select them in left-hand list, you can see them highlight in green in the model graphics. I will right-click on them and choose consider. And, oh, let me go back to the show drop-down list. I just want to show everything that is ignored. That way I can see what have I picked already that I need. Okay, let's start off with the other different tanks. They are in some patterns. So let me select these three over here. Right mouse, mouse click and choose consider. That's good for that one. And let's repeat that process two more times. I'm gonna grab, where'd it go? This one, yes. 
these three, right mouse click and choose consider. And for the last one, let me pick a component to figure out which pattern it's in. Select those three, right mouse click and hold and choose consider. Okay, so that's good for that. And up at the top, here we have one of the tanks. It is the gas subassembly. Sorry, when I collapse, it just moves everything around. Let me right click and choose consider for that one. And then right click on this one and choose consider for that one. And the last thing that I want from some mounting references, I happen to know that there is a subassembly over here with a whole bunch of different supports. Let me try to figure out where the assembly that contains all that is. Okay, I think it is, is it this? Nope, that's way too much. That's more than what I wanted. Let me see, oh wait, this one? Yeah, I just want those components. I don't want everything. So let's choose consider out of there. And that's all the components I want. I'm not gonna grab all these other different components. They are more than what I need for right now. So let's choose the open button in order to close the subsets dialog box. Let's go to the options dialog. And first I'm going to exclude and then shrink wrap rather than shrink wrap and then try to remove various different surfaces. I'm gonna crank the level up very high in order to do this. And that is good. Yeah, I'm gonna go just all the way up to the top for this one, just because I know it's relatively lightweight and I just wanna make sure I grab all the uh, surfaces that I want. One other thing that I'm going to do in this situation, when you are performing piping and piping routing, you use a lot of datum points, especially for using as your start points for different pipelines. So I wanna grab some different datum points. Let me turn on my point display. And the points that I wanna grab, I know that there are some points from these flanges over here that I want to get. Let me see if I can go to my layers, then use my pick icon to grab this particular part. And then let's see, there is a layer called datum points. Let me see if it's got the objects that I want. Yes, yeah, one of those two datum points. Let me choose the show button and zoom in and zoom out. And I think it showed up a datum point on here. Let me see, there might be another one on here that I might need. No, uh, port one. I don't know, I guess that's the right one, but oh, they're just two on top of each other. And I see what is going on here. Okay, let's close the layer tree. And then the datum point that I want in this particular situation is the one called near. Let me use my, oh wait, let me click in the field for include datum so that I'm only capable of choosing datums. Okay, I want the one called near from each of those flanges. Let me do that. Again, I'm just gonna zoom in and zoom out. A lot of these different fittings have multiple datum points on them. And let me just do that real quickly and then we'll come back. All right, I think I got everything that I want in my shrink wrap feature. I always like to rename my shrink wraps. So let's call this SW Routing References and hit the enter key so it takes the value. Now I will hit the check mark and the shrink wrap will be created. I could have grabbed the datum points from the other different flanges up top. I'm going to show you how you can create a sketch if you want to grab other additional references uh, or if you want to create other additional references for routing in your skeleton model. Okay, looks like the shrink wrap has been created. Let me deselect everything and then I'm going to open up the skeleton model in its own separate window. And so there you can see the different visual references that we got down up at the bottom. Let me go to the top. Let's say that I wanted to create some points manually in here. I can create a sketch in this particular part and let me select one of the flange faces to use Then I'll click on the sketch button let me add to my list of sketch references, and I'm just gonna select these cylindrical surfaces. That's good. In the references dialog box, it says that it's unsolved. You can hit the solve button if you want, but it will solve right when you close the references dialog box. 
and then I'm going to create some points. I'm using the point out of the datum group, not the point out of the sketching group. If you use the point out of the sketching group, well, it'll just remain in the sketch. This will actually create a datum point in the model. I'm just going to locate it right on the center of my sketch references that I created. So that's good. Let me hit the middle mouse button and then hit the check mark to get out of there. And for the sketch, well, let's rename it. Let's call it flange points one. And I can redo that over on the other different side, but it would be the very same step. So I'll do that in between now and when I start the next video. In your skeleton model, you might want to create some other additional references. So for example, maybe I want to create a datum plane at the level of those flanges because I know that I'm going to be routing. I'm going to route from down here, up over here to these up at the top. Let me turn on my datum plane display. And so to create a datum plane at the level that I want, well, I can create a datum axis through one of those flanges and then have a datum plane through that flange and parallel to the datum plane called top. That's just the way that I want to do it. I don't know. There's probably an easier way. But anyhow, I will create my axis and let, I was like renaming my features. Let's call this the top flange axis and then hit the OK button. And the flan, the axis is still selected, uh, although I don't have my axes visible on the computer screen. And when I go to create a brand new datum plane, since the axis is still selected, it's automatically used as one of the references. I will hold down the control key to select that plane down there at the bottom. And rather than, than being offset to the plane, I will be parallel to that particular plane. And for the display, maybe I don't want it automatically as big as the model. I can resize it just as big as it needs to be. So I will click here to pick maybe the cylindrical surface to resize the plane. And for the properties, let me call this the top flange plane. And hit the OK button. So in that way, I've created some other additional references for my use in the skeleton model. Everything is good over here. Let me hop back over to the other assembly window. Let me turn off the display of my datums. I'm just going to do a couple more steps in order to kick off the ability to do some piping. Let's open up the subassembly in its own separate window. And then I will go to Applications and then choose Piping from the left-hand side. Ah, this assembly that I am using is pretty old, so I'm getting this Convert Your Old Piping Assemblies, the one called Rails and Gas, are pretty old. Hey, let's just choose the OK button in order to do that. And so I am now going to bring in my line stock that I want to use for routing in here. So I'll go to the setup drop down menu and choose line stock. This triggers the menu manager. I will use the read button and I'll go to a folder where I have a bunch of different line stock and I'm just going to use this one over here. If I go to the list button, well, now I've got my line stock in the model. You can also see it here in the model tree. And I'm going to start creating my first pipe that I'm going to wrap. To do that, I will choose the Create Pipe button. And then I'll give it a name. And I'll just use a simple name like A-001 and hit the Enter key. And then choose the line stock that I'll use for that one. There you can see it in the model tree. So then in the next video, I will set a start point to use, one of those points that I brought in from the shrink wrap, and then show you how to use the extend command for routing.